Okay. You, you guys are ready? This? Oh, you're doing it, Danilo? Dave, you're right up on your camera, so I can barely see you. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast <laughs> with Dave, Danilo, and Jeremy. And I'm Jared. I'm not any of those guys. I'm not even the host of the show, man. <laughs> no, you are now. <laughs> we're we're covered by a Epcot no government license. <laughs> Uh, I am NPR Dave, and I'll be uh, your co-host for this evening. Yeah, this is a clusterfuck. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's <laughs> gonna be a clusterfuck. Yes, and we have just been hijacked by the phone, phone sex operator. Oh, well, I guess I'll throw my two cents in. What are we on episode fifty-four? Good times, guys. What? Good times. Yes, fifty-four. You know, uh, it's a, it's a I, great number. I I would like to take this quick opportunity to mention something we forgot to mention a couple of weeks ago. We have passed our one-year anniversary at this uh, debacle we call the podcast. Uh, <laughs> technically, our fifty-first show was a year because we did skip Thanksgiving. Um, so, yep, we've been trucking along yeah, for a yeah, year. One year. People actually one still year. listen to us amazing that's not bad that's less weeks off than dave and i have taken off in our show so <laughs> well hey they're tried... only on episode five they, they tried sorry to, they um... tried to take another week off but on new year's i said no we are doing a show and we had i got merrick and andre and we did a killer show anyway so the show must don't go don't on. give me an excuse or not don't give jeremy, me an excuse you don't need jeremy an excuse is hardcore here. <laughs> yeah Jer- jeremy is hardcore or he doesn't have much of a life well, let's go with the first though because that makes me sound a lot better <laughs> so what do we got coming moving tonight, just <laughs> moving just sucks you know i'm finally moved and i'm over at this new house and i'm getting some kind of semblance of of, of life back and it's it's been nice oh well, we're glad to hear that dave i uh, i appreciate your condolences yes dave dave's change of voice is due to the fact he's been without internet for how long how long <laughs> Uh, quite some time. Quite some time. <laughs> That's what it does to you. Internet's a drug, you know. It's the modern drug. People can't live without it. You know, the governments of the world are trying to classify uh, internet more and more as a utility, and and I'm starting to agree with them. Sadly, <laughs> it's like uh, I got water, power, and oh, where the hell is the internet? <laughs> I mean, does it really matter what you? Got? They call it a utility so that they can squeeze it into like a yeah. special legal well, category. So I mean, it's welfare. It's it's a service. I mean, why do you got to have all these different names for the same thing? It's a it's a service, right? So no, if it's well, a utility, it's, no, no. If it's a utility, though, then they can control it and they can have yeah. monopolistic control over it, right? Yeah, yeah, they can, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, how that I, works. Did you guys see the the recent um, Adam Adam Kokesh video where he was interviewing this woman, um, um, Bernie Sanders, uh, L.A. something like that? Did, yeah, yeah, I did. You saw that? No, I was amazed. I was amazed at how kind he was in the beginning to her, and then finally he just kind of let loose <laughs> on her. She started talking about net I, neutrality and all the all the common, I guess, leftist uh, arguments. You know, well, do you really want the corporations to just have the fast track while everybody's on the slow track? And you know, <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. see it, but I can. I mean. That's the a microcosm of the whole debate, right? Like people say, you know, you got to be kind of, well, at least some people maybe on the left side of the libertarian pool say, you got to be kind of nice, uh, polite to people when you're spreading your message. And then in practice, you realize that when you do that, they exploit it as though your politeness was a vulnerability. So they take that as an opportunity to just launch like logical fallacies and add, you know, ad hominem attack. Oh, Although, hot air balloon situations. Yes, and you end up in a situation where you're like, you know what? Just fuck you. <laughs> you, get to, you, get, you get to the point where you just don't even care anymore. And hopefully, I mean, for Adam Kokesh, I mean, he's taping it, putting putting it on his, uh, you know, his YouTube channel or whatever. He's gonna get some value out of that. But for the person he was actually talking to, I mean, did I, and again, I didn't see it. Did he actually change her mind? No, Most likely not. No, no I definitely did no. not. <laughs> it's never for the well, person. I, mean, I, I, I didn't see it either, but I, I can. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't seem very abnormal that Adam would stay calm for the majority of it, because that. I mean, he's into the whole NBC thing, so that's kind of how he operates. It's, it's all about, right. so, it's all about soothing the individual and, um, trying to do everything from a place of empathy. Um, you know, when you're when you're conversing, you know, asking questions and stuff like that versus just, te- you know, and again, I mean, we've discussed this a little bit before. I, I have my issues with NVC, at least as much as I know about it at the current point, you know, because I have not I have not studied it extensively. But from what I know, I, I have some questions and some qualms about it. 
Um, but I do. I have been able to see, you know, people like uh, Brett Bonat. I've heard talk about it, um, and the way he explained you know, on the School Sucks podcast, and the, and the way he explained it, I, I can see how it definitely could be a useful tool in certain situations. Um, you know, I just, I, I don't know. I, 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 I see it lending lending itself a little too much more towards like manipulation, um, which I'm not a huge fan of. But, uh, but yeah, but like yeah, like I, I said, I, I, I've seen Adam in action with that type of stuff before, so that that, that doesn't seem out of the could ordinary. Could you explain what NVC is for the people? Oh, nonviolent communication. I, Sorry, NPR. I don't even know. What, I don't even know what that is, and I'm not <laughs> saying that that anything about Adam. I knew what it was. Partic- in, in particular, my pull, my whole point was uh, us as anarchists or voluntarists or anarcho-capitalists. It's like how many, how many conversations do you get in with someone in a public forum where you actually expect to change the person you're talking to's mind? Like any, really? How many? Like, does it ever? Almost never. Change- <laughs> right. it's, uh, it's it's hovering around one percent. <laughs> well, it kind of. Uh, pessimistic or like down in the dumps over like trying to spread the message because they're like man i just have like these few people that i've been talking to forever and i can never change their mind and it's like you know what it's like you're never gonna change their mind it's not even that's it's not even them that you're trying to change their mind it's the people that are watching these conversations if you keep having them you'll start to realize the people will Mm. approach you and say man you know what? You were right when you said this thing. You totally changed my mind about this. It's not the people you ever directly engage that change your minds. I mean, there's exceptions to the rule, but those exceptions tend to prove the rule. It's actually the bystanders and the and the people that are on looking for so so someone like Adam Kokesh, or for any of us really that are into this. Um, it it definitely pays off if if, if you're going to have those conversations, don't have them in your private messages on Facebook. Have them in no, the public. Def- no, 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 definitely not. I, that's I a refuse. waste. That's, yeah, that's a big waste. Absolutely. Yeah. I refuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I mean that that's why being a content creator is so valuable, right? Because we're not actively uh, attacking individuals, we're just stating ideas and principles, right? People watch this stuff, they consume your rap and our videos and other people's books and articles and you know different different mediums and. Uh, and then they come to you, and they're like, "Oh, that was, that was really cool. You said, what do you mean by that?" You know, and, and then their mind is open to receiving new information. So, yeah. and also, it's if you're doing it and you're excelling at it, and you're not getting like pessimistic, and you're got, not getting nasty and like thrown off and stuff, it sends a signal to others that what you're doing is possible. They can do it too. You know, that, that sort of thing. So if you're just having these private messages or these conversations in your private messages on fake Facebook, nobody's ever going to see that shit, dude. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe putting yourself out there is scary. Maybe a lot of the people you've known throughout your life will kind of negatively react toward you. Maybe they'll say, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of worried about you. You seem kind of extreme lately. Really? Is my, is my, <laughs> For a hundred percent voluntary relations with no initiation of physical force, that's extreme to you. But stealing <laughs> from people at gunpoint to pay for college or selling the unborn on the bond market to prop up the bankrupt no, Social no Security and Medicare funds. Slaves. Th- yeah, exactly. That's not extreme to you. None of that shit's extreme to you. But mm-hmm. me saying that, me just talking, my words. Saying that nobody should initiate force against anybody else, that's extreme to you. That's, that's just gaslighting, dude. That's all it is. You know what that is? It's, 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 it's double speak. It's double. <laughs> double well, it's think. that. It's oh, that. Man, but what, no, no, more, no. Th- more than that, it's them saying with no argument at whatsoever, they're saying, hey, shut the fuck up. That's all, <laughs> that is, that's all you're, they're you're, doing. You're challenging my preconceived no, notions no, and I'm no, feeling no. uncomfortable. Stop. I'm, I'm going like, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna get real deep. Their map doesn't have your, your, uh, your uh, legend on it is all it is. The map doesn't have the legend on No, they, they don't understand the legend you're talking about on your map. That's it. Well, yeah, but uh, I, can, I can see what you're saying with that, but... Um... I mean, it's. I mean, I, I agree with you guys. It's 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 silly to watch sometimes, um, but I, I would agree, of course, that the, you know, like you guys both, uh, both Danelle and Jared said, you know, that you know you're, you're doing this for other people watching. I mean, we just had we just had a huge thing go on on, on our on the Seeds of Liberty uh, Facebook page today. 
um, where I had this woman who was just very irate. Um, apparently, Bernie memes really piss people off. Because, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, my yeah. God, she was so angry that I dared compa- that I dared skip over all the other examples of socialism and go right to Venezuela in my comparison. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I started off by saying, you do realize this is a meme. It's meant to be humorous. I'm poking fun at Bernie. But, 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 and then she went on like this woman actually went so far and like I had other people who ended up finding it and like watching along and then, and then sending me other messages going is this woman for real because like I got her to admit that she believes that not only the ends justify the means in any scenario that she gets what she wants but she admitted that uh, she that she fully believes that coercion and forcibly taking people's possessions for them is right if it's for the greater good um and, and she claims it's not to be, she, no she claims not to be a communist that's the funny thing about this um was, hey man maybe she, she maybe she's just a single mom man i don't know what she is but oh my god are we gonna go hate mail to uh jerry one at twitter oh no i get plenty of hate mail on this one too i'm, I'm usually uh, <laughs> so, so jeremy is, it, 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 could, could this woman possibly be a, a comedian of sorts no <laughs> okay. oh, no my god. apparently <laughs> she's a basket weaving phd Oh, uh, uh, who, who actually in several? Not, it's in, not satire. In several, no, no, it's really? not satire. It's not oh, satire. Shit. And in several, in several instances, she actually to the point where I actually said had to say I had to stop the conversation and said, "Hold up, hold up, hold up, holy <laughs> fuck, miss! Did you really just appeal to your own? To, you just appealed to your own authority twice in the same sentence." How narcissistic are you? And she oh, just you know what that's going. called? That's, that's like a messiah complex, no, right? Exactly. Like she literally, like it's one thing people appeal to authority all the time. Like that's something. I mean, like she literally appealed to her own authority to put uh, to put me and others down multiple times. Uh. And I'm like, whoa, this is a special. You are a special snowflake. Like I you actually. Know what that is? <laughs> you know what that is? It's the that's might, when you're having a conversation a with the Rock. You're having a conversation with the Rock, Dwayne Johnson. He's like. <laughs> As the Rock says, and like that's that's the argument right there. Why? Because the Rock says said, so. You know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> oh, it was it was I, yeah. But like you were saying though, like you know how people like Adam can stay calm, but you you're like after a while you're just like screw this. Like that's what I did. Like I I, I kept going with my arguments. She refused to answer. You know the basic question about the the. Uh, um, the validity of government in the first place, you know, Larkin's, que- Larkin's question, you know, the, can you delegate a right? Um, she flat out refused to answer it because she told me that I don't get to tell her what rights she has, but somehow she gets to tell me what rights I have. And I'm like, <laughs> so at that point, when logic was completely out the window, I just let go. And I just, I, 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 a couple other people came in. I'm like, you guys can handle this. And then I just kept taking pot shots at her because she was like, and actually, even the pot shots were legitimate because I called her a psychopath on numerous occasions, and she was proving herself to be a psychopath. <laughs> because you had a, you I had was a, supposed to, I was supposed to shut up and suck it up because the UN decided that healthcare is a right, so I don't get to argue that anymore. That is what, what if she they, <laughs> the UN decided? What if the UN I, decided that white people were slaves? Would I, that also be legitimate? Um, according, well, she's okay with slavery. Because oh, okay. No, no, when I never point, mind then. When I, out that, <laughs> when I kept trying to ask her, what? Why do you think? Like I was trying to be. I was honestly like I was trying to probe her. I wasn't trying to be a you know a dick at first. And I was like, why is it that you think you have a right to something else that somebody you know to something that somebody else must provide for you? And mm. she kept dancing around that. And when I said when she like laid it out, I'm like, okay, you're advocating slavery. You're telling me that you think it's perfectly acceptable to demand something of somebody else at their cost just because you think you need it. And she said, for me, yeah, she said, yes. And I said, you realize that that's slavery, right? You are now here on my page openly advocating for slavery. And she goes, for me, it's not slavery. And then she wanted to move on. I'm like, no, 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 no. We just went through the logic here. This is slavery, miss, and you're openly advocating it for it. I mean, yeah, yeah. At us, that point, us, I just went, I'm like, you're a psycho. You are literally a psychopath. Uh, <laughs> us as anarchists, we argue over, like, all these terms, like, anar- like anarchists or ANCAP or ANCOM or, like, all these different things. And it all comes down to, like, 
for me, my beef is, do you believe in positive rights at all? Which, unless you've put somebody in a state of incapacity, you don't, they, they don't have any positive rights over you. Or, do you. or do you believe in negative rights? And like what you're talking about, Jeremy, is like, this woman seems like she really, really believes she has a positive right to oh, everybody yeah. else. Oh, yeah, she absolutely mm. did. Absolutely did. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, it, I'm more on the uh, do rights exist kind of scale here. <laughs> Well, that's a, no, that's I, 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 never, I, ne I never go down that path. That's too Thank nihilistic, you. too subjective for me. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm with Danilo on that. So, but no, negative like rights that. do exist. The only thing that anybody, you do owe everybody something, and what you owe them is non-aggression. You have a, they have a, they have a negative right to not be aggressed against. See, like, like, um, yeah, the, the, you know, do rights exist? Or does government exist? I think what people can come back at you and say, well. You know, does a business exist? You know, what can you touch a business? Can you know? Can you touch no, freedom? Can you touch? No. So, so, so it's like Neither I think the better idea, the better way to look at it for me is, um, you know, what, what uh, the idea of statism, not government itself, but statism or the belief in authority. That's that's the underlying yeah, no, root. That's absolutely. the underlying um, uh, contradiction that we, that we have to address. All right. Yeah, so not that is, or doesn't which exist. Which is weird. You see that even with among like people who among. Uh, they all within the entire spectrum of libertarianism, right? So, like Jeremy was saying, the whole Lark, uh, what Larkin Rose was would ask, do you have the right to delegate a right that you don't have to somebody else? Mm -hmm. And someone like Jan Hellfield, for example, will have a video where he approaches Bernie Sanders act, asking that exact same mm -hmm. question. Do you believe you have a right to delegate a right that you don't have to somebody else? Make him squirm, squirm over it. And next to... Bernie Sanders, Jan Hellefield looks like a freaking anarchist. I know. How is he not an anarchist? It's just... Dude, it, it makes no sense. But then, <laughs> but then you put, you put <laughs> Jan Hellefield next to Larkin Rhodes, and all of a sudden Jan, <laughs> Jan Hellefield suddenly believes that he has the right to delegate a right he doesn't have, theft, <laughs> to other people for the maintenance of a government. And I'm like, wow, what the fuck is going on here? And it, it's not just Jan Hellefield, but it's like this Austin, Austin Peterson type people like, <laughs> Lo logical consistency is uh, really not their strong suit. Really dedicated minarchists who want who want to appeal to authority spend all their time saying, "Is this person an anarchist? Is this person an anarchist? Is this person an anarchist?" If they're not, you shouldn't be an anarchist either. And it's like, man, look how hard you're trying about this. You're like, is Ron Paul an anarchist? Ron Paul is literally saying that anarchy is a great idea and that he's leaning more anarchist all the time. You're spending all your time trying to prove that he's a liar. And like build like a following off of this and call it like educating people. Like, what is the point of what you're doing if not narcissism and marketing? Oh, it's not, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's absolutely. I'm well. I mean, with uh, Peter Fuck in general, um, it's definitely narcissism. But just, but but uh, but but, but oh, in general, but, but Peter, yeah, I think we, it's yeah, the worst yeah, case we, of Dunning Kruger we, we have, I've we, ever we, seen. We all we all have our personal pet pet names for him. Um, but it, but it, but for the most <laughs> part, you know, people in general are. Um, I, I think it's a com. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's that underlying fear where they don't want to, you know, they 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 can't fathom not having the state, which which to me le lends to ten, le you know, it, le it leads to their character and saying that they don't actually, um, they don't understand freedom and they're not responsible enough for it. Um, but but a, I think a lot a, a big part of it for a lot of them is is a narcissistic thing where not only do they want to, um. You know, tr try to convince people to be on their side. They want power. That's what it is. Like, they, they want the power. They can talk all they want about, oh, how we're going to help lessen the state. No, you're not. Who has ever no. done that before? None of you. Not any of, not even Ron fucking, not even Saint Ron. I am fucking sorry. He did, he is, he did not do anything while he was there except educate. And that's why I would encourage everybody listening to this who hasn't already done it to listen. If you were into Ron Paul and if you're on the fence about this at all, listen to Ron Paul's last appearance on the Tom Wood show. Listen to his last appearance at the Mises Institute. Both appearances, he basically said he tried everything he could for three decades within the state apparatus at the highest level there possibly is. And it achieved, as far as government goes, as far as political action goes, it achieved absolutely nothing <laughs> as far as preventing the failures of Keynesianism. He says that this is exactly why he's leaning anarchist these days. 
Yeah. And people well, say, well, like, well, there was a politician in a congressional seat that wouldn't take bribes, so he did kind of do something for however long he was in. But you no, no, say that, and I'm not. I'm not trying to diminish his accomplishments by any means or anything like that. It's. I'm, but it's I'm mostly, just trying to be Jared, that guy. Sorry. It's mostly Jared, symbolic, Jared. and I'm saying off of his <laughs> own his own words. His own words. I'm going to quote him verbatim right now. He said, "Believe me, I tried." Yep. See, Jared, That's Jared, his own Jared, words. Jerry, what you're not realizing is if you look at a graph of the of the debt, right? The the national debt, right? Uh, ever since he's been on, he's been in government. And and you have a, a um, you know a close enough look on a microscopic scale. Maybe maybe you'll see I don't know a couple of hundred dollars dip no. <laughs> in some veto that he did well, <laughs> in the, well, no. in the national, Maybe maybe. But the, but the other thing people say is that well his political career sent a message to people right and it's like no it wasn't it was the internet it was content creation on the internet that sent a message to people because he was not getting mainstream media play at all he was not getting coverage he was he was not in the limelight by any means the only reason he was able to spread his message is not so much because of the fact that he was running for president but more because of the fact that he was he had a network of really dedicated people on the internet that i remember even even as far back as like 2007 when I first started supporting him in the conspiracy theory message boards and shit like that, MySpace, huge following for Ron Paul. Lou Rockwell.com put his material out there. And I know Lou himself is probably a little bit too humble to admit it, like the whole Ron Paul revolution, but that was more his doing and like the dedicated circle of people that were sharing things on the internet than it was Ron Paul doing. That's why I try to, that's why I get so fucking pissed off and people try to say that political action is the only means especially when they're sacrificing principles for people like Rand Paul or Austin Peterson or any of these people they're even Gary Johnson or he's, he, or, 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 or the or the newest phenomenon for quote unquote libertarians Donald Trump um, oh, yeah. I mean, people people try to argue the libertarian point for Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders both, and I think I think what that basically just amounts to is desperation combined with d does this person have a chance? That's what, and, then, yeah. and that's what voters are looking at it from. You know what I mean? They're they're thinking, does this person have a chance? So with Ron Paul, right? Probably the most principled person ever run for president ever, and oh, all these yeah. people, the people that are supporting Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders for principles, if they're if that can even be like a thing for positive reasons, I'm sure there's good for good. They have good intentions. There's no reason they shouldn't have supported Ron Paul for those good intentions, except they didn't think he had a chance. Uh, and I think he, he might be the only uh, the only politician so far that has called the uh, what do you call the House of Representatives um, like sociopaths in their <laughs> to their faces <laughs> in his farewell yeah. in his farewell address. <laughs> I oh, love that. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, no. Well, I, well, these days, yeah. I mean, back, back in the day, they, used, I, to, they used to tell each other how they felt. I mean, one guy, what was his name? Who was it? Sumner, who got who got his ass whooped on the floor, like almost beaten to death. Um, back in the eighteen forty. Oh, is that is it, are, are you talking about from the uh, the, the, the recent um, Bolelli? Podcast. I, I knew that story beforehand, but yeah, uh, he, he he brought it back up again. I, it wasn't yeah, Summer. Yeah. Who was who it was? I can't remember. Oh, I, I can't remember it. the guy's name, but whoever it was, he got he got absolutely he got pummeled with a cane, <laughs> almost to death. <laughs> right. You know, that's why. Like that's why when I made that when I made that meme the other day where it had the uh, you know the 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 poster from the uh, the Jackson uh, the the uh, Burr Hamilton duel, um, mm -hmm. and then and then and then pictures of of Trump and Hillary whining and saying you know this was political discourse back in the 1800s this is political discourse now like obviously I have a lot of issues with Hamilton and I don't agree with this I I, I I fully believe that the system was was built corrupted so I don't you know I don't have any um, you know you still uh, want to give your props to two guys that'll go and shoot to the well, death yeah of like yeah. at least like you know what they 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 didn't just yak at each other and do stupid and, <laughs> and do stupid stuff and then and then and then work together to screw the people no they actually they actually opposed each other and they actually followed through like i mean i made i made the comment the other day too that a lot of people seem to seem to think was a great idea although i think some of them for the wrong reasons um that i think steel cage matches would go a long way to solving some of the problems in the anarchist community especially the people that want to yak at each other um, <laughs> and just cause problems. Throw yourself in a steel cage and put your money where your mouth is, all right? It'll be voluntary, that, so there's that, no nap that, issue. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, and, and and also how I, th- I think in um, in ancient Greece when they would when they would fight their you know their battles, it would be the higher you know the more wealthy elite people who would be on the front lines, <clears throat> because they have a reputation to preserve, mm-hmm. because it was considered honorable to be you know put yourself in danger and demonstrate your bravery and courage. Whereas today it's the complete opposite. <laughs> you, know, you always put the little the guys out there. will never out, see a gun right. in their life. Yeah. <laughs> you always Uh-oh. put the, fr- the little guys on the front line. Actually, know? I mean, when you look at it like that, though, I mean, yeah, they, they use things to their advantage, but they actually made the smart play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the, if, you have a, if you have millions of pawns to throw in your way, are you really going to keep stepping in front? Um, right. if, if, you, if you wish to survive, no. Mm. So, you know, from that angle, I mean, you know, I don't I don't agree with what they did, but you can understand it at least. You can sure. say, okay, well, yeah, it makes sense that, what, you know, how do you not only become rich and powerful, but stay rich and powerful? Well, you have to stay, old, al- you have to stay alive. <laughs> and what, the old, men, the old men declare the wars and the young men die. Right? Yeah, well, that's how it is, and, and it's that's unfortunate. Always... But, um, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, it's the, uh, the, the – this political nonsense, I don't know. They people just, I, I I can't understand any any anybody who claims to be an anarchist attempting to support any candidate, um, and I have a real problem with the libertarians that do too. I mean, I don't I don't I don't see it. Here's what I want to say about it. Um, I think there's a real problem in the anarchist and the libertarian community, or in general, about people not realizing the difference between like descriptive analysis and prescriptive analysis. So even just talking about this now, right, like I could say, maybe I could make a speculation and say that maybe Clinton is the lesser of all of these evils. Or maybe I could say that Sanders is the lesser of all these evils. Or maybe I could say that... Trump is the lesser of all of these evils and maybe I could talk about it because it's a hot it's a it's a hot button topic and it's going to get me views on social media which I'm sure everybody knows who creates content they're talking about politics during politic you know election season it's going to get you fucking views on social media but making these speculations and the fact that I'm talking about it does not mean that I'm supporting or endorsing or telling somebody to go vote. And I'm not saying that I, I've made a prediction on who's the lesser evil, but I'm saying just the fact that there this is happening, right? So there's a lot of people out there right now who are professional content creators in, in libertarian and anarchist communities who are making descriptive analysis about what's actually happening and people are either intentionally or maybe not intentionally maybe they don't know they're doing it they're conflating descriptive with prescriptive and i know that there's a lot of incentive to do it because if somebody who has more followers than you is talking about politics and they're not specifically saying don't go vote while they're talking about it you might be able to draw a lot of attention to yourself by saying this person is supporting politics now and you could even take things they say out of context and say look 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 he's right on his balls fucking right in his balls fucking you want he, <laughs> this person wants trump or this person wants uh sanders you know what i mean I'm Molyneux. I mean, you could you could say that about Jeffrey Tucker and Bernie Sanders, um, but same thing either I way. You that, know what I mean? I think that guys. I think I think that guys like Molly and Jeffrey Tucker are working at a different level of propaganda than we can understand, and have motives well, that we can't really see well, clearly. That that's kind of what I just explained, though, and it's not it's not as mysticism as that. It's more descriptive versus prescriptive right so if you're talking about this and you're reaching a larger audience which those people are tucker writes for newsweek molyneux's got what more than three hundred thousand followers on youtube um it's it's a fucking large audience dude and where do you fucking expand from from there and i'm not saying i don't even want to make a speculation on whether or not either of them have sacrificed principles or anything like that all i'm saying is they do a lot of descriptive analysis without really making like prescriptive like they're not saying go do this they're just describing how they see things right and a lot of other people are making inferences from their descriptive analysis or the quality of their descriptive analysis to try to make the jump and say that it is prescriptive like they are saying because they describe it like this they're they're prescribing that people should act on it and that's no. not my personal question well, no, I, I I would agree with you. That's if if I mean I I really honestly I mean if we talked about Molly and stuff, I I haven't listened in quite a while. Although I do know some of the stuff he was saying about Trump, even you know, six months back or so. 
Um, and when I listened, when I did listen to it, I, I recognized what you were saying that I, I don't recall him ever actually saying, go vote for him. He was explaining the situation. Um, and I, I haven't heard, I've heard people re- remark on something Tucker said re- in regards to Bernie, but I didn't actually hear it myself. So I have no like firsthand knowledge. So I wouldn't even want to speak on that. I'm um, not even just to clarify, I'm not even a hundred percent sure oh, yeah. on Tucker and Bernie. I'm oh, just, just for example, for just, oh, no, just, oh, as, yeah, but I'm just, just as an example. Oh yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. But, but even taking it broader than that, like anybody who's sure. doing that, I, I agree with you. Like there is a difference, um, you know. Um, I, I don't have a problem with people doing stuff like that. I mean, if you're, you know, again, just like you said, if you're a content creator, it makes sense to talk about it, especially if you're trying to draw in more people to try to get your message across. If you're speaking well, right. about something that more people other than anarchists are currently focusing on, you may catch some people who pay mm-hmm. attention and go, oh, wait a minute, now I hear this, and then maybe they hear some other stuff. Like, I, well, I, have, and it, I have no problem with that. It does happen too, and I want to say, I mean, people can say whatever they want for me, but I listen to all of Molyneux's call-in shows, and I have for probably like I want to say like the last eight or nine months. And I, I think a lot of people watch him on YouTube, so they see a lot of the excerpts from the call-in shows, so they miss a lot of the in-between stuff. But he does clarify uh, pretty frequently that he's not he's not advocating that people vote for Trump. It is just descriptive, and and I think it is a marketing opportunity for a lot of people oh, who see, you know, he's got three guys. Oh, no, exactly. Oh, yeah, no. Exactly. Oh, oh, no, but you know, it was really, co- it was really cool. Especially, what, you, what, mo- kind of, what kind of? Let me, let me stop you before I forget. Like... Before I forget. Before I forget. Before I forget. Um, <laughs> he 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 got a lot of criticism over Bill Whittle, which I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of Bill Whittle either. He said a, a, a kind of a couple cool things uh, that I, I don't want to go into right now. But um, one cool aspect about that that I have heard on. Maybe the last few call-in shows is that he has had callers call in and say, "I discovered you through Bill Whittle, and I was previously conservative, and I'm now considering falling." Uh, nice. So, oh, obvious. Oh, I mean, nice. Yeah, no, no. It is. I mean, it's kind of working. You know what I mean? It's it's that's great, man. I don't, I don't even know why people get so upset over just like little. No, dis- no, and 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 once you change your attitude to look at people and never believe 100 percent of the bullshit that's coming out of their mouth. It changes the way you, uh, you know, like, I like Molly. I'll say it right out. I like Molly. Do I believe everything that comes out of his mouth? No. Would he tell well, you to believe everything that says, comes out of his mouth? He says, I pay my taxes and I don't smoke pot because I don't want to hurt my brain. And I'm like, when he says shit like that, I'm just like, what the fuck are you even talking about? That's <laughs> Number one, that's horizontal enforcement of statism, trying to say people who don't pay taxes are stupid. Number two, cannabis has been pretty great for a lot of people with post-traumatic stress disorder, like childhood it also abuse. Can heal, it's, it can also it's, can heal gray spots well, they, <laughs> in your brain, yeah. So if he's concerned, like he says, about like childhood abuse and like that sort of thing and like the long term effects of that. And if I know their talk therapy is a great thing, but if cannabis can ex- it make that even better for people or if it can it can it can help, then I don't I don't understand why people would be against that, man. Let, let, let me say one thing. Uh, I, I remember before I got into um, volunteerism, I, uh, I I was more, I guess, constitutionalist, you know, and uh, and I had a friend who, who was really into that, too. And so. Uh, she would send me stuff and one of them was those Obama documentaries about like you know his past and how he's really mm-hmm. Muslim and he was never born in the United States and all these you know cause, his cause name is Barry Satoro conspiracy type things like I don't know what he doesn't have a certificate or something I don't know but um, but to me now that you know now that I realize it it's more like you know when people do that like they're bashing a particular um, you know person for their background or for the, the way they lied it's more like an ad hominem attack and and so what I like to clarify to people is that I'm not just against Obama. I'm not just against George Bush. I'm not just against Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> right? I'm against the idea of a ruler, right? The idea yeah. that somebody can do things and it's not a crime, but if other people who are individuals and they're not in government do them, it's a crime. That's what I'm against, right? So I, yeah. I think too much, like, and, and I get you, I get what you're saying, Jared, like, He's just describing the situation, and and maybe that does give him more followers. And I guess, yeah, I, I, uh, I guess in a way that's a, it's a, it's an interesting idea, and I, I never really thought of it like that. Um, but um, I, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I know well, with my, I with mean, my particular child, I, I couldn't do that. I don't know. To it's some degree, not my to some side. degree, 
maybe you not personally, but I mean, to some degree, I mean, Jeremy does that with like, I know Jeremy is a meme machine when it comes down yeah. to it, right? <laughs> so that's what yeah, that I mean, is though, right? So like you the, the political memes, you're yeah. drawing, you're draw, you're using the weight of the bull against it. You're using what's hot right yeah. now to draw. Yeah, of of true. course. So. True. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, well, what, what kind of news do you think we're going to be making when when tr- it's Trump versus Hillary? I mean, they're going to be Hillary and Trump memes. It's not, it doesn't and mean this, we support this whole conversation. This whole conversation leading up to me saying this: if that happens, I hope Trump wins, dude. <laughs> what? What? I'm not going to go vote. I'm not telling anybody no, no. else to go vote. But no, I think it would be again, fucking funny. Oh, you guys are voting, <laughs> you guys are voting <laughs> about he what? Probably, no, I don't I don't he get probably would be the <laughs> more memeable candidate because Hillary. Hillary's only got a couple of. I mean, she's she's horrible, but her horribleness has been on display for so long. That you know, some of that stuff will get tired in a hurry. Um, Trump's a Trump, as much as he's been a public figure for a rather long time, he's never actually been a politician. So it'll be a whole new world. That's what. That, so I would agree. That's with the you. other. I would agree with you in that in that sense. I mean, because again, unfortunately, that that we're going to be uh, stuck with one of them. I want uh, the, I, actually, the fact I want, that they're seeking power is fucked. But that's that's a huge. <laughs> that's a really good point, Jeremy. Is that out of all these people, right? Maybe I think uh, Carson already dropped out, right? So he he never held so. office. I don't think. But um, but uh, Trump, dude, he's never held office, right? Uh, so people want to say that he's like a violent, authoritarian type person. Maybe he fucking is. The fact that he's seeking power would kind they of. They all are. It. What do you mean? Maybe he is. They all are. So yeah, sure, sure, sure. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, actually, if we're going down that path, I'll say that. Just I, the, I, uh, I real quick, real quick before I let you go, Danilo. Just like, but like what Jeremy's saying, right? He's never actually held office, mm-hmm. right? So he's never actually taken a blood money paycheck. No, he's oh, had yeah. right, 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 right. some degree. Right. He's had a couple. Yeah, that times. doesn't mean we should be optimistic oh. that he'll have. I didn't say that anybody all. should be optimistic. That's what I'm I, I talking about. Look, Dave. I, Dave, I, I Dave, 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 about Trump. No, dude, it's going to be funny. Come on. No, no, no. Actually, no, no, no don't no, be no, optimistic. No, no. I prefer, what were you going to say? Danilo, Danilo, what were you going to say? I prefer a Bernie Sanders president only because I think the the wealth transfer will occur that much more quickly <laughs> because of all, all the ridiculous well, uh, doggles see, that he's going to try well, to put into effect. If, if, if I, I think it's going to it's going to it's going to put on the fast track. So I get, said get, this get, last no. time I was on the show. Off, Bernie Sanders, is, <laughs> Bernie Sanders as president would be great because then the failures of Keynesianism would actually get blamed on a socialist. That'd be awesome. That's why I, that's why I don't want Trump to become president. You know what I mean? There's 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 good things and bad things about either outcome. That's what you people gotta look about. Look now, at Bernie Sanders president is like a pimple coming to a head. You know, you want it to come out, you want it <laughs> wow. to express. You don't want it to main, stay there under the skin, right? Then it's just annoying. No, no, yeah, but see, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. For that, for while that, sh- while that ship crashes, I want hey, Hillary right, in office. That, okay. Jeremy, Jeremy, that's that's got to be a good meme somewhere. Hold I don't on. know. Hold on, a second. hold on, a second. hold on, a second. hold on. A second. Hold on, a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> I don't. I, I think that I, I don't. Like I've said this before. I don't think it. I think. Ja, I think Jared's more right about the fact that it'll be more fun with with sure. Trump because I, I've said this fun. before. And I I don't think you because you guys have ar- tried to argue this point before, and I, I don't think you're really taking into account. It doesn't freaking matter who wins. The policies are going to be the it same. Doesn't. It's right, it does exactly. so 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 that, there that is too. there is no there is not going to be Bernie will make it happen faster than Hillary than Trump than no. <laughs> It's all going to follow the same course no matter who they pick. Now, the one thing I will say, though, is the one thing that you brought up, the, the kind of like the, you know, about, um, about Bernie, um, I think that, that about, you know, about him being a socialist and then it'd be able to be blamed on him, I think that that could be a viable um, thing to explore to see maybe if that's why they are that's why the establishment is trying so hard to keep him out not because they think he's different and he's not going to agree with them because they don't want it to be able to be blamed on him they'd rather they, they have wanna, it be blamed wanna, on somebody that they can paint as a white a right-wing fascist so they they in that blame, same vein. Blame, blame the rich in guy that, in that same vein yeah exactly so yes. they give a bunch of free free publicity to uh not ron paul to donald trump using the ron paul effect reverse manufacture the reverse engineer the ron paul effect make it seem like the media hates donald trump while giving him a bunch of free publicity then all of a sudden you have the perfect guy that people already hate but they're not going to riot over maybe they will maybe they won't i don't know but they have the perfect guy that Fox everybody hates trump coverage perfect guy that everybody hates 
he can be the guy that ends social security. He could be the guy that ends Medicare. He could be the guy that lets everything go bankrupt because he has a history for it. And he's willing to take the hatred. He doesn't have anything. You, 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 that's, you, you, it's like, it's like a perfect thing. I think elections are rigged. I think elections are rigged. And I think that they engineered this exact situation. <laughs> Yeah, that's, the that's funny what I'm thing, saying. The, I, I think that's more. Re- I, I'm not saying I'm not saying definitively that it is, but I think that's more realistic than some of the other stuff we're talking about here because that, <laughs> does, like you capital. said, like you said, it does fit the pattern of everything right, else right. they've yeah. done for years. Are you saying Donald Trump is the one? Se- no, the, no. The, 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 if, the, if, he's, if he's at the <laughs> helm, if he's at the he helm of the no, there. Dave, Dave, if he's at the helm of the the, the country. Leo? Oh yeah, no. When the, the whoever whoever's president gets blamed for the economy because Americans are fucking retarded. So if the economy collapses, well, Donald Trump's the president. They're not going to look at the hundred last hundred years of fucking Keynesian economics. They're not going to look at the Federal Reserve. They're not going to look at the eight years or whatever. Say, oh, fuck, Donald fucked everything up. Interest rates. They're just going to look at Donald Trump. You know, everything was going great until the Donald got in here, and then it just fucking went to shit. So it's you know what it is. It's this. Fucking capitalism. We can never try this capitalism. You know, you know my, even... one of my one of my favorite Donald Trump contradictions is uh, in an interview. You know, he said, "I'm going to scrap Obamacare. I'm going to take it out completely." And they, the guy's like, "Yeah. So what? What are you going to put in place of it? My own health care." <laughs> And how are you going to pay for that? Well, you know, the government's going to pay for it. <laughs> like, Although, okay. <laughs> he, did, he does have, he did say that he was going to allow, I think, opt outs. He's going to abolish the uh, mandate, the personal mandate, which is pretty cool. But I don't believe it. It's all yeah. just a fucking show, dude. You know right, what right, I mean? Right, 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 right. The, fir- the first question you have to ask for anybody who supports any political uh, candidate for, for any office is do politicians lie? That's it. Do yes. politicians lie? <laughs> and people adamantly <laughs> believe that George Bush was like a small government candidate. You oh, know what I mean? Like before he got elected. That's what he was. That's what because that's what he was sold as. Just like people thought Obama was anti-war and anti. Like yeah, they're all sold as something. And on some level, some of these people may actually believe that's what they're for. But once they get in, all bets are off because they're not really in control. And. You know, they're not actually, well, just like any politician, they're not actually held to any standard by what they said in their campaign. You know, they can, what, no. oh, yeah, yeah, well, if they don't do what they say, we're going to vote them out. And how often does that happen? I mean, what's the, <laughs> what, what's the incumbency rate? Like somewhere between 88 and 92, somewhere in that range? 98%. It's not, no, we've talked Which about is it before. It's not 98%. 92, 92, 92. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's so weird because the, the approval rating of Congress is yes. the it's, six it's, it's single almost, digits. It's almost, the, for a while, right, it was right, almost right, perfectly right. inverse. For a while, it was hanging around 87 and 13. Like yeah. it was eighty. It was, a, it was, it was, it was like it was like no, but no. But for a couple of years back, I remember seeing it. It was somewhere with like eighty-seven incumbency return rate, thirteen percent approval. It's like that's literally it, it's completely inversed. How the hell are you doing this? Like it should be the other way around, or you should be firing these people. But no, if they he, just people just keep going back because they have short attention spans. They get they get sold every every election cycle. They get sold bullshit. Um, and they buy it every time. It's you know that's why my one of my favorite memes that I've ever done was one of my original ones, which is the the simplest one of all, which has d- been done before. But I did my own thing on it with Lucy, Lucy and Charlie Brown, because that's literally what it is. It's the voters every damn time running up to the system, going, "It's not going to be pulled away this time." <laughs> well, it's also the Wizard of Oz because it's it's this whole man behind the curtain thing. Like this, every election is the same thing. It's distract people from the. The Federal Reserve and how money actually works and the fact that we're rolling over two, <clears throat> $200 trillion worth of unfunded liabilities generation to generation, 75 years ahead of time, right? So you're talking about <laughs> next... I don't even know what to call it. Everybody, alive is, everybody who's alive now will be dead and everybody alive at that point will still be paying off debt for services that people who are alive now enjoyed if the government doesn't go bankrupt which it will so this whole this whole this whole election (laughs) cycle is pointless dude this whole (laughs) especially the minarchists dude i don't even know dude like this why 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 would you want a libertarian why would you want an anarchist like adam kokesh even why why would he want to run 2020 be the 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 figurehead for the failure of keynesianism that would be the biggest disservice to anarchism ever in my personal opinion yeah, but I don't think somebody like him, number one, even because, like, I mean, you got Daryl Perry, R- Daryl Pe- Perry running this year, and it's literally just to educate. Like, he has no intention of 
you know, he, I mean, he has no, he has, <laughs> he does, he doesn't think, you know, he has no plans of no. coming close I know. to winning. And um, which, which I know again, nobody could win. I'm just saying, if somebody did win, I mean, oh, yeah. and there's people that there's people that get excited about it, dude, and think, yo, man, support this person. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Like, what do you think is actually going to happen if if someone like that wins? That's what that's what I'm that's what I'm addressing. Oh, oh like, yeah, oh yeah. But that's well, that was that was my original point that we ended up we ended up kind of drifting away from was I don't. You know, when you, I mean, not, not that I have a problem with it, because talking about all the other stuff was important too, but, you know, because I don't have, I mean, I have a problem with the, the same people that you do that you, when you, you were originally discussing about, you know, people uh, mistaking um, descriptive, you know, descriptive talk for, for prescriptive. Um, but my bigger issue is the ones who claim to be libertarian, like, claim to be principled libertarians and or anarchists who are still going to go out and not just give descriptive talks about it, but actually encourage people to vote. Because yeah, it, like it I don't the shit out of me. It doesn't yeah because it, it doesn't make sense on any level uh, you know because I I used to make the moral argument all the time and they would just kind of push that to the side and it's like well okay fine I'll come up with another one and I came up with a pragmatic <laughs> argument that none of those that none of those fuckers actually want to respond to because I would say is the nuance to the moral argument that needs to be made here and I think maybe this is the key to it is that there's certain I think there are certain circumstances in which it may be a moral to vote rather than immoral to vote however there are still moral things you could do like agorism that would render the state useful so if you're choosing if you're intentionally shunning the moral high ground for something that's amoral it could be argued mm. That's victim blaming. Not. No, no it's not. Okay. I'm not saying that it's their fault. I'm, I didn't even assign blame. I'm saying that somebody's choosing amorality over morality. Well, what would you? Oh, okay. And I, well, in in the, in general, choosing that over immoral, like that's not an issue. But like, what would you say as as as, a, as an amoral? Uh, action when it comes to voting. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me I, would possibly be the ballot <clears throat> measures or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that. I mean, and I don't. I'd I'd give people a pass for coxing or voting for Ron Paul back in 2012 or mm -hmm. 2008, but I wouldn't make that exception again for people in the present. And I would also argue that something that has to be absolutely has to be taken into consideration is the fact that maybe your intention as a voter is to reduce government, but you have to look at the outcome of what your your action was even if you're in, you maybe you didn't you intended to throw it to get everything wet but you doused it with kerosene and lit it on fire I, I right think i so, agree with you jerry that doesn't jerry, that doesn't jerry. absolve you with the responsibility of lighting something on fire just because you wanted to get it wet so if if you vote for smaller government and it ends in larger government you may have had good intentions but it doesn't mean you didn't lead us down the path no, to hell no 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 think about this i think it's an amoral action now i just put the pieces together think about this does All government right. does government <laughs> exist <laughs> No. Then how how can we discuss about voting in a fantasy election matter? Fucking because people actually Cause it's act because it's the, not fantasy. Yeah, exactly. Because people do act, and it does actually affect us. Individuals so, yeah. act. Yes, the, the, reason, the individual the voters act, and it ends up causing pain to us. I would say that I would personally make a distinction between someone like and I've said this in the past and I think that's I think what a lot of people have tried to harp on and like try to say that maybe I'm supporting voting and I'm not is that it can, maybe it can be amoral to vote right like voting for Ron Paul or voting against bond measures that's still not me saying that you should go vote and that's still not me saying that agorism's not more moral than something that's amoral you know what i mean the voting in the elections itself yeah they force the elections on you so it's an it's an immoral situation to begin with so there's but there's still immoral reactions to it if you want to use the elections for your own benefit that's immoral if you're voting to reduce the effects of the neg the negative effects of the elections on you it might be ineffective and it might result in the opposite of your intended effect mm -hmm. But it's not. Maybe it's not immoral. It's amoral. Still, there's moral high grounds like agorism and anarchism and actual civil disobedience. That's the moral high ground. So what I, my real problem is when people say, you know, what the political action that has to happen. Okay, maybe it 
does, right? Maybe there has to be people in government that <clears throat> enact gradualism. My argument would be is that that's a lagging indicator. And if somebody enacts gradualism through government, it's not going to matter what their political leanings are. They're going to do it because they can't control people anyway. Yeah. Sorry, I've got right? a stink bug on my mic. Oh, okay. So, like, like so. Um, <laughs> no. my biggest beef is when people who's, who want political action, they favor political action the most, say that others are stupid for resisting taxation. Like we, like people all don't know what the consequence of resisting taxation. Like everybody doesn't know it's fucking, maybe statists don't want to admit it, but maybe, like all anarchists doesn't, don't know that it's going to get you thrown in fucking jail or could get you thrown in jail or like there's no implicit threat. Of, but for you to say that that's stupid... That's to that's horizontal enforcement of statism. Any single time you say, well, yeah, but they'll throw no, you in no, jail for subjective. it. Yeah, but they'll throw you in jail for it. No, it's horizontal enforcement it's, of statism. No, calling, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, it is. It is. It is subjective. Like they think it's it's to them. It's not. I'm not saying it's stupid. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking yeah, about know. is the fact, the fact that they're making it easier. To engage in plunder, then they're then they're making it to resist. They're making resistance harder by telling people that they're stupid for resisting. That makes resistance harder. That's horizontal enforcement of statism. Yeah. I fucking hate it, well, slave, well, slave, well, slave see, on slave, no, slave on slave. No, and and, and I, I I love that point. And 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 that point is actually what made not not you making that point, but that idea is actually what led me to my position that voting itself falls into that freaking category <laughs> i've okay. done it dude i've said okay. people if you're not gonna vote then you're not making a difference blah 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 how fucking hateful is that dude that was me in the ron paul years right like how how many things are there you can do to make a difference how many different types of goods and services could you provide to people or voluntary oh. interactions where you can make a difference to people without using the state to initiate force against somebody that's well that's I, I, Jesus no, but, Christ. But, but see that that's 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 why <laughs> that's why that's why I think that's why I think the argument against um against voting is not just a moral one anymore and and I think that all of I think any I mean like I said the the the, the No, the, it's pragmatic. How can they claim they have the pragmatic high ground with voting when the smallest the smallest constitutional government ever exists? ever resulted in the biggest global empire ever. You can't say that voting is pragmatic. Of voting led to the drug war. Voting led to the war on terror. Voting led to all that shit. Voting led to the massive expansion of the Constitution, which was supposedly... If not here. politically actually voting, it's just idly sitting by and watching it happen and is still voting. I don't even... No, I, that's... That's victim blaming, Dave. No, you well, I mean... No, it's not. No, no, no. See, there could have been a violent resistance... But again, at any time in this country, and there hasn't been well, one. There, there has been, what are you talking about? There hasn't been. There's been violent resistance over full over, scale. Over, over, over. There should never be violent resistance. That's not what I'm be, saying. No, civil there. civil disobedience, man. You just resist the initiation of force. Is not violence. Is the initiation of force. Like self defense is not engaging in violence. Dude, you're like somebody's forcing you into that. You're not being violent. You're just defending yourself. Well, of course, of That's, course. But that's but that's what I'm saying though. That that's why I think. I mean, I agree with you. Obviously, that's why I think that. That's why I think the pragmatic argument is actually not voting, because yeah, I agree. Because not only um, can you, so, you can not only can you take the same amount of time, effort, and energy, and and possibly uh, time, 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 energy, and mon and possibly money that you would have put in to stumping for a candidate, trying to get a candidate elected, do, do, donating whatever the hell you did that you're that convinced that yeah. this has to be this has to be done you could that that same amount of time could have been taken to making helping make the state obsolete helping make even... yourself and your family more free in the in the act in the in the present which actually would further the, which would actually further the cause not even just that but when you vote regardless of what you vote for like say me in 2012 voting for Ron Paul, you're sending signals to other people that you can't control how they perceive that they'll interpret as he accepts the outcome of this because he's engaging in it, right? Otherwise, if 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 people participate in elections with the understanding that they're not going to respect the outcome if they didn't get what they want, there'd be no fucking point of an election. And, and 
I don't think there is anyway, but think about it. People, statists really do think there is that. So if I go and vote for Ron Paul and Barack Obama wins, they say, well, you have to accept it because we all vote. We took a vote and this is what happened. That's what a fucking election is. So you may have intentions about one thing in an election. You may say, well, I want this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, the implication of the election, I'm not saying it's consent. I'm not saying that you're consenting to it because it is an immoral fucking thing to force on people, but you are sending, you are signaling the status who don't think it's a coercive thing that you accept the outcome of this so if you're wanting to fight statism and the superstitious delusion that it is participating in elections not going to do that all it's going to do is signal to other people that you think it's legitimate that, that, that reminds me that reminds me of a, of a meme where it says um you know if you don't vote you, you can't complain because you didn't participate in the process and if you do vote you can't complain because you did participate in the process <laughs> so well, what's the common you theme you can't complain you can't complain i think i think the uh, very important thing to always consider is is when someone's brought up their whole life telling <clears throat> and they're being told you know this is the only way you can solve this problem this is the only way this can be solved you know vote this this is how you know voting is how we fix this you know and you, you know hateful, your parents man. Your parents tell you this. Your your schools tell tell you this. Your pastors tell you this. Your et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, tell you this. And 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 then when someone like me or Jared or Jeremy or Danilo comes along and, and says, you know, hey, voting is violence. Voting is illegitimate. You you shouldn't vote. Um, what do you mean? What do you mean? Pushing a button or writing my name is yeah, violence? It's, oh, it's, that's it's all it is. Seem- no. No, it's not. The The election itself is funded by taxation, which is theft at gunpoint. It's extortion. It's a violence that you're Correct. you're choosing somebody to get who's going to receive a paycheck, who's going to be paid for by theft and violence. There's I mean, I think, the, you know, the, the pragmatic uh, anarchists that say, um, you know, well, there's gas in the car. We might as well drive. I, I just don't get it. That's like people saying, I might as well get my benefits from government while I can get them, right? I paid my taxes, so I, if I can get more back than I paid in, or if I can even get the money I paid back than I paid in, good, right? Because fuck mm. government. I, I, I want to I answer my own thing there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the government is bankrupt, dude. Right, so it has course, no, fiat money, no money. Every time, money. every time it pays somebody anything, it's gonna lend it into existence. It's gonna print it into existence on the credit of people who aren't even born yet. So for you to recapture your tax return or any other benefit that you recapture for go- from government, they have to s- steal from somebody else, probably someone who's not even born yet. So. It's a bailout. It's like saying, yes, this person stole from me. The government stole from me. And because they stole from me, I have a right to force them to steal from the unborn. Like you, and if if you're against that, and if you're against that, and if you're against that, then you're against uh, uh, restitution. You're against restitution. No, I'm not against restitution. I'm against forcing a mugger to mug somebody else to pay you restitution. If they don't have money, you don't have the right to make them rob somebody else. That's all I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> nice. Well, it's and monopoly money. Sorry to get so fired no, up on it's that. No, it's the No, no, this is, I mean, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, so I'm earlier... agreeing with you. I've been, I've been having these arguments with, with so-called anarchists and libertarians for, for the past couple of weeks now. And the, the only other point I, I would add on to that is um, the, the thing you said before about um, the signals that it sends... Um, to you know that that you're that you're they think you're consenting or that you would that you that you're accepting the the outcome um i would also say that on top of that as far as a prag you know an an unpragmatic way to go about things you are all it, it it not only by doing that are you sending those signals but if you vote for a candidate and he or she wins and then Maybe one of the policies that they promised that they were going to, like, one thing gets done. And as we know, like, historically speaking, every time one little thing gets done, there's usually at least a hundred other things that happen at the same exact time. So government actually doesn't shrink at all. It's still always growing. But let's say you get that one thing. What does that do to the individual's that most anarchists and libertarians would claim are the closest to stepping over and saying, oh, wait a minute, like the, the Tea Partiers, the, you know, the Big L Libertarians, 
um, even some of the conservatives, all the people that say, oh, the, you know, most people that I know all agree that they're closer than most of the liberals because they have a somewhat of a better understanding of personal responsibility and, you know, and, and, and what freedom is, you know, more closely what the freedom actually entails. I mean, obviously, they still fall short, but they're closer. But what kind of signal are you sending to them by getting somebody in and getting a victory? Maybe I was that wrong the, about anarchism. That Maybe the system the anarchism works. Are... That but the other thing too is we the, want the, by to piggyback off system. that. Oh man, you know what I just you just made me realize is the other thing that you send through to them. The other thing you signal to them too is that if I vote for this person and they do the thing that I want to do and they win and they do the thing that I want to do, but everything else they do is shit, then I get to take credit for this one fucking thing that they did was good, and I get to totally disregard every fucking other yes. negative external. Man. Oh well, you know yes. I don't control that guy. Yeah, no, exactly. Oh no, that that like Bernie and, Sanders and that and, like Donald Trump. Donald Trump, he should control all know, of his fans. Blah oh blah blah. God. Well, what about the guy who rushed the the stage? Who said, "Well, I have millions of followers, so how can I? How could I be expected to control all of them? I'd be that'd be hell if I had to be responsible for everybody who liked me. Like literally, like same fucking breath, dude. Like exact exact same thing, dude. Yep. It's uh, yeah. Well, that's it's, politics. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah, well, that's politics. But that's like I said. This I, I think this is you know they're they're not. They're I don't I don't that's see a, a pragmatic case a, at all. That's <laughs> aggression. That's a that's aggressionists, and that's what I think you have in the left libertarian circles. Is you have aggressionists. What 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 left who, libertarian riled your? You don't know what that you, you know. Dude, they're trying to smuggle positive rights under the umbrella of libertarianism. They're trying to say that they have rights for, like, guaranteed basic income. And, uh, oh, 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 this is my favorite right here. Name-calling is a violation of the non-aggression principle. Like, that's such fucking bullshit. So what you're saying is... a violation of the NAP. Somebody, 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 somebody call called you... so loud it burst your eardrums. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. So what you're saying, what you're saying, if I call you an asshole, that's that's a violation of the non-aggression principle. Therefore, you have a right to defend yourself from me with force. So you get to punch me in the face for calling you an asshole. You're that's shit, Lord. Oh, my saying. gosh. Fuck them. That's what I'm, I'm you shit, Lord. You're just a white male. This Shut episode. Up. This episode will be the PG episode of our series. So, <laughs> well, awesome, gentlemen. The rant episode. Man, it's So, you guys want to say any closing remarks before we wrap up? I think the, I'd like to thank uh, everyone for the spectacular episode. Jeremy had some good points. Jared, a really good rant there on uh, on voting. And uh, Danilo, great soul patch, great optimism, and keep it going, brother. <laughs> and thanks for having me on guys you guys can check out the seeds of liberty podcast on my soundcloud account soundcloud.com backslash j3 443 one you can also google me jerry one you find me on facebook under jared howe also j uh j3 443 one jerry one my rap page bandcamp j3 443 bandcamp.com what about you guys? Where can we find the Seeds of Liberty podcast primarily? I need uh, a new web website editor. I'm so bad at it. <laughs> yes, what? We, we, well, I, well, I, you know, we've we've been told multiple times, and I, we're aware of this too. That you know, our actually, I think the most common phrase I've heard to describe our website is it looks like something a 12 year old girl <laughs> made in the 90s. Oh no! Um, so I, 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 Geo I Cities. Have, it's Geo Cities. I haven't put much time into it. It's, it's okay, whatever. Mainly because it I looks don't like know a how. MySpace page. Yeah, well, hit them up on YouTube. <laughs> Seeds of Liberty podcast on YouTube and Seeds of Liberty podcast on Facebook. That's where I follow them. You should get into the Seeds of Liberty group where we have discussions, stuff like that, and argue minarchists and and anarch- we post taxation as theft memes. Um, apparently, yeah, excellent. <laughs> Hey, it's I think you're not doing just daily taxation is theft meme thread. Jer- Jeremy One is our resident volunteer's rapper supporting the Seeds of Liberty podcast. We're very it's grateful for him. Bars, mad bars, oh, mad yeah. bars. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't seen I haven't seen raps for, from you lately. You've been been, been like on him. I've been sitting on him. Oh I'm actually, my God. <laughs> I'm keeping him <laughs> myself. Usually, my up. usually you're like once a week, right? I usually do. Well, I did that for a year, man, and now okay. I'm just like, you know what? I want to, I want to make an album. So I'm like three songs into it right now. So like, usually oh, I would release uh, a song a week. The last yeah. three weeks I haven't released anything. I got about three songs done. I'm, I don't know how far I'm gonna go. Maybe five, ten songs, and then I'm not gonna get the 
inside track on that on Telegram? I don't know, man. Maybe. <laughs> send me the send me the files. Send me the files. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'll, I'll be down in Birmingham, down at Five Points in Birmingham, selling them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Try out this mixtape, mixtape. I'm sorry for hijacking your show no, tonight, man. guys, but thanks no, for having me. I thoroughly really enjoyed it. All right, so uh, yeah, I, I just want to say, you know, obviously, I, I love having you on, Jared. It's always, it's always fun. So, uh, you know, I'm glad we didn't have a guest, and that meant you could come on this week, because um, uh, we always, always have interesting discussions. So this was a good time, and uh, yeah, people, stop. Uh, Stop justifying your, uh, your your need to uh, initiate violence on the rest of us, because um, the, the the ends do not justify the means. I don't care what you try to throw at me. You cannot have a cons- you cannot have a consistent. They position. do justify the memes, though. Well, they do just- <laughs> everything justifies the memes. Um, okay. That is, and, that, and that and that is totally that is my totally objective subjective opinion on that. So let's. Do that. <laughs> but yes. So anyway, it's been fun, man. Uh, I definitely got to do it again. <laughs> Yes. And definitely yeah. won't catch me trying to uh, cause divisions, you know, or anything like that, or you know, trying to benefit from the anarchist movement by slipping in positive rights. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, awesome conversation, gentlemen. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we should include the the uh, the, the nice Robert Hig- Higgs quote about voting. I really like that one about the. Um, you know, you're participating in your own flogging, but you know, uh, I forget the whole thing. <laughs> it's a long one, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. Voting, uh, you know, uh, what I like to tell people is, you know, take that time that you're going to spend researching a candidate and voting and do something productive with your time. <clears throat> like, it's funny that pe- people can do absolutely nothing productive the whole year. And then, and then when voting time comes around, they accuse you of being unproductive <laughs> because, because they voted. So I, I find that pretty, uh, pretty absurd, but, uh, awesome conversation, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to help us out, uh, please like comment, share and subscribe to us. Um, uh, just help us spread the word that helps as well as uh, monetary compensation through uh, Bitcoin or Patreon. That's patreon.com slash seeds of Liberty to help us out. Um, we are capitalists in the end. So, uh, if you find value in our show, please help us out. And uh, donate and uh, vote with your dollars. That's the only democracy I support. Vote with your dollars. <laughs> so, give them the loot. Give them the loot. <laughs> Help us do what we do. Uh, so, uh, this is the out. Seeds of Liberty podcast. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Bye. Peace. Good vibes.